Chapter 2, Motion in One Dimension. Now when we talk about motion, we need a reference. For example, if we drive a car along the street, how do we know that we're in motion? Um, we can look at the houses along the street because every one of them most of the time are different. So we know that we're changing our position with respect to those houses. So therefore we need a reference frame. For motion in one dimension, we just need a x-axis. Say for example, this is the origin, and we define x equal to zero. And second, we have to define the positive direction, and right now it's pointing to the right. But it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, since motion in one dimension, you can choose to the right as positive, or for your convenience, you can also choose to the left as positive. If the motion is up and down, for example, if you drop something or you toss something up, then the motion is around the vertical direction, we will usually call as Y direction. Then you can either choose up as a positive or sometimes we choose down as positive. No matter what you choose, for one dimensional motion, if you choose to the right as a positive and the left will be negative and negative signs are only represent the direction. Now the first thing we need to learn is about position. So for example, if this is the x-axis and the next we must have a scale, since this is in meter, that's SI unit, and we marked, if we mark this as a 1.0, for example, it's all integer, and then the next one equally, we have to mark 2.0 and 3.0 and so far so forth. So, when we mark our position, if we mark right here as position A, obviously if it's halfway between 1.0 and 2.0, this position is, let's say X of A, it has a position of 0.5, since it's sharp, it's 0.50 of meter, it's positive, obviously. Then, if we choose another position as a position B, say for example, that is X of B, it looks like this is 70% of that between 3.0 and 4.0. Let's assume that is 0.7. Well, since this is roughly estimated, so I do not put a zero after that. Um, so 7 is a um, one-digit significant figure. So that is second position. A third position, if I mark somewhere there, for example, this must be negative 1.0 of meter, and that would be negative 2.0. So if I mark here as position C, then my X of C is negative of 2.0 meters. So you can see, if I mark positive, which means that is on the right side of X equal to 0, and negative means on the left side, of that x equals zero, that is the origin. Next thing we need to define as distance. Distance defined as how much total that something or traveled. So if we ask for what is d distance a to b, well, an easy way to do that is that we just count because this is half meter and this is a point of 7 meter, so the difference is around 0.2 of meter. So D of AB, that is the final position, which is XB, subtract the initial position, which is XA, and that will give us a point of 2 meter. Now when we use a 0.7 meter, subtract 0 0.50, and this has two sig fig, this has a 1, what we do is for plus minus, and we line up the decimal. So there are two sig figs after decimal. This is only one. Then we just ignore that one. We just use 0.7 minus 0.5, and that we get 0.2 because 7 is estimated. What is the distance between from A via B goes to C? Obviously, from A to B, you have to travel 0.2 meters. And from B back to A, you have to travel another 0.2 meters. Then from A, that you go to C. From A to C, this is half meters, and it's 1, and 2, and 3. So 3.5. 0.2, 0.4, 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 
3.5 so 3.9. How could we get that? Well, D of AC, well, we have to specify that is not directly from A to C, so we better say D ABC, which means we start from A, goes through B, and goes to C. Then we use our final position, which is X of C minus X of A. Since XC is negative 0.2 minus XA, that is 0.5. And what we get is negative 2.5 of meters. So probably we'll say, wait a minute, we just counted 0.2 meters A to B, B to A, another 0.2 meters, this is 3.5. How come you end up negative 2.5? Well, as a matter of fact, what we did is final position xc minus initial position x of a what we did actually is not distance it is a so-called displacement displacement only cares for initial position and final position so the change of position defined as so change of positions defined as displacement so actually da b c is displacement negative 2.5 means that our change position towards left is negative and the total units of change is 2.5 meters so how do we recognize its displacement the other one distance okay from now on most of the time well, we will add an arrow above the position. If you see a D with an arrow, that is a displacement. We will address that in the next chapter. If you see a physical quantity with an arrow above it, that indicates it's a vector. It has direction. So, for example, speed and velocity. Well, sounds like same. Sometimes we use them mixly. For example, uh, we say speed limit. But do you ever hear velocity limit? No. Sometimes speed and velocity are interchangeable. So, as a matter of fact, they are different. Velocity is a so-called vector. A vector should have magnitude, which is always a positive, and directions. So, when we describe a velocity, for example, we should say 50 mile per hour, 23 degrees north of east. So 50 mile per hour is the magnitude, 23 degrees north of east is the direction. We never say negative 50 mile per hour and 23 degrees north of east because there's no meaning. Negative, positive, as I explained here, only means directions. The directions given 23 degrees north of east. So when we describe a vector, we only give a magnitude with the units. When we say mile per hour, we know that's velocity. So speed, as a matter of fact, is something called scalar. A scalar has no direction, but a scalar could be positive, negative, or zero. But in this case, our speed is either zero or positive because we talk about number. So when we talk about a positive direction or negative direction, actually this is a vector already. Otherwise, if it's scalar, there's no positive negative, either zero or it's just a number um, as far as for the speed. However, later, say for example, if we encounter temperature, Temperature is a scalar because you don't have to describe the direction of temperature when you use a thermometer. But we do have positive value for the temperature, for negative value in the Celsius scale and in the Fahrenheit scale. However, if we use the SI unit for the temperature, that is in Kelvin scale, that everything is positive because the lowest possible temperature is zero degrees of Kelvin and which we can never reach, that is the lowest, it's called absolute zero.
Anyway, let's just give a summary. First of all, position is associated with a coordinate. Position should come with positive and negative because a coordinate has negative and positive. That indicates your position is on the right side or left side of the origin. Distance is how much total that a particle or person or car traveled. So I explained if you want to get distance from A, go to B, then go to C, then we have to add from A to B, B to C, then from then add A to C. If we ask for change of positions, that is called displacement. We only care about that initial position, final position, and that will give us a direction, in this case negative means to the left, and a magnitude is 2.5 meters. So, now what is the definition of speed? Well, now we're going to discuss that very soon. Average speed, defined as, so speed, let's use a symbol V. Average, let's use a bar. And defined as total distance over total time. That is average speed. For example, let's say this is the x-axis, positive to the right, it's in meter. This is x equal to zero, that's the origin. If something starts from, let's say, origin, that is position A. Let's say it starts from A, goes to B. From A to B, distance AB is 10.0 meters. The time it takes is 2.0 seconds. And then, if it continues from B to C, the total distance is 12.0 meters, and time is 3.0 seconds. And then we ask, what is the average speed? What we do is say we say V average from A, there V goes to C, for example, that is total distance has to be 10.0 plus 12.0. We do not bring the units because both are in SI in meter already. And the time is 2.0 and plus 3.0 total distance over total time so we end up with 22.0 meters divided by 5.0 of second so the unit is meter per second so it's 4.4 a meter per second we since the denominator has two sig figs so we just keep two sig figs as the result however if we ask for what's the average for from A to B, then we just use the distance A to B 10.0, divided by the time is 2 seconds, that end of 5.0 of meter per second. And then if we ask for from B to C average speed, that is 12 meters for 3 seconds, that is 4.0 meter per second. Now take a look. Sometimes if I tell you from A to B, the average speed is 5.0 meters per second, and B to C is 4.0 meters per second, then I ask, what's the average speed from A to C? If you add 5 and 4 divided by 2, that will end up 4.5 meters per second. Obviously, that is different compared to what it should be, that is 4.4 meters per second. Could that be it just, you know, a tiny little bit difference we don't have to worry about? No, that's not the case. Let me give you an example. If you drive your car for 60 minutes at 75 mile per hour, but you only drive one minute 
for 100 mile power. So what is the average? You can't just use 100 mile power plus 75 mile power divided by 2. You can't do that. You have to use 75 mile power time one hour that you drive 75 miles and then you find out for that one minute if you drive 100 mile power which is obviously not very good too far above the speed limit but you find that distance then you add the total then you divide it by total of 61 minute or you convert that one minute to one of the 60s of an hour you get the average so we need to strictly follow the definition of average speed is the total distance over total time. We cannot just add the speed from A to B and the speed from B to C and then divide by 2. So this is the definition of average speed. Now, now let's look at the, this concept, average velocity. Since this is velocity, we have V and arrow. Average is a bar. Average velocity defined as change of position over change of time. If we follow that definition, change of position will be final position minus initial position divided by final time moment minus initial time moment or sometimes we say that is delta of x delta means change over delta of t in the case that we define t initial as zero then delta t is the t total now average velocity is a very interesting concept let's take a look at an example if we have a x-axis to the right is positive and it's still in meter and we define this is x equal to zero that's the origin for example if we have an object starting from point a which is origin goes to b say the average speed a to b average speed equals to 2.0 of meter per second it takes this object of total 10 seconds start from A to B then this object continues from B to C average speed is 3.0 of meter per second and takes time of total of 8 seconds so B to C now, if we ask, what is the average velocity? Well, then we need to follow the definition of change of position over time. Position, obviously, if we talk about position B, that 2 meters per second times 10 seconds, obviously, A to B will give us a 20 meters. And B to C, that is 3 meters per second times A, that's 24. From B to C, 24. So, on the x-axis we should mark 44 of meters so if we ask for what is the v velocity average from a goes to b goes to c then we use the final position of c minus initial position of a divided by the total time in this case t total that will give us a final position as 44 meters initial as 20 meters and total time give us 10 plus a is 18 so the result will be 24 over of 18 if we keep two sig fig that will give us 1.3 of a meter per second now what if this object after stop at C comes back say from C back to A it takes another 20 of seconds so now the total time from A to B to C back to A is 18 plus 20 total of 38 seconds if we ask for what is the velocity average from A goes to C back to A 
something very interesting happens. Since A is our initial, A is also our final, so according to definition of average velocity, that is final position minus initial position. So final position is A, initial position is also A. Looks like that no matter how many seconds is the time, that we end up zero for the average velocity because position A minus position A is zero. Why is that? Because average velocity depends on the change of position. Change of position, and we learned, as a matter of fact, that is a vector called displacement. Displacement only deal with initial and final position. So you start from this position, the end of the same position, we say zero displacement. So if displacement is zero, then the average velocity will be zero. However, if we ask for what is V average, that is speed average, from A to C back to A, then we use that definition for total distance. That is um, obviously A to C is 44, and come back is another 44 is 88 meters, and the time is 38 seconds, and that is the average speed. So it's quite different of average speed and average velocity.